If you consume any sort of SCP-related content, you'll probably know a universal truth about the fanbase. They want Hollywood-quality adaptations of their favorite anomalies. Maybe not all of them, but a vocal majority or minority. Countless commenters claim that they require a feature-length film or a fully fleshed-out Netflix series exploring the ins and outs of the Foundation. Some watch horror flicks featuring crazy creatures and scenarios and find that they're close enough to keep them satisfied. Others play the multitude of SCP-themed video games and find their scares that way. But in the end, what people really want is an SCP experience tailored to the true wikihead. One that, from storyboard to credit roll, understands the universe that it's taking place in. While no major corporations have latched on yet, there are plenty of top-notch SCP films and animations to take in today. Sure, there are scant few feature-length ventures, but there are enough excellent live-action and animated shorts made by dedicated creators to keep fans' thirst for audio-visual entertainment slaked. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 SCP Horror Movies. Keep in mind that I tried my best to showcase the work of as many creators as possible, and in doing so, didn't feature any particular creator more than once. If you want more SCP madness, make sure you check out our SCP playlist right here. You might notice I'm in a new location again. A little technical difficulties in my home studio. I will be back to that soon, hopefully. Also, technical difficulties in my hair. Wicked, let's get started. Coming in at number five, what's at the bottom of SCP-087? We should all know what 087 is at this point, but in case you've forgotten, this video will give you a wild and wonderful refresher. Created by SCP Animated, a YouTube channel you should definitely check out if this stuff interests you, it documents multiple descents down a staircase with seemingly no end. If you've read the logs before, you'll be pretty familiar with the story. Three different D-class folks get mic'd up, don body cams, and head into the abyss as researchers look on. On. Each individual experiences a different type of horror as they discover more about whatever the hell lives at the bottom of this seemingly endless flight of steps. SCP Animated does a fantastic job encapsulating the dread of such an experience. The whole thing is done up in greens and grays, much like watching something play out on an old computer monitor. The flickery, obsolete technology look is a quality stylistic choice and adds to the mounting fear as each test subject descends deeper and deeper. The story itself doesn't ever really veer from the original subject matter, but that's actually not too big of a deal. SCP-087 is an unsettling tale of unknowns and it works. The voice acting really does add to the atmosphere as well. What's at the bottom of SCP-087 isn't the full-length feature or expert run TV show a lot of fans are pining for, but it opens a brand new window into the SCP universe that's definitely worth exploring. And if this does grab you, there are plenty more animated adventures where it came from. Just be careful, if you watch too much, you might get sucked right in. Maybe even literally. Coming in at number 4, we've got The Foundation, SCP-1047, The Painting. We've featured stuff by Forlorn Foundry on the channel before, but that was while showcasing some Siren Head sightings. SCPs and SCP-related stuff is this channel's real bread and butter. They've got all sorts of outstanding, creepy, and sometimes even funny adaptations of famous and not-so-famous SCP entries. The one that stands out the most, though, is SCP-1047. That's right, the painting. Similar to the 087 animation we discussed earlier, this one is done up in an old security footage style. High camera angles, sterile environments, and a lack of verifiable information make it an overall unsettling experience. A test subject is brought into view a covered painting. At first, he appears to think it's a joke. He's featured on the canvas and thinks it might be a depiction of hell. Jesus is there as well, judging him. As the subject's exposure to the painting continues, he becomes more and more agitated. He brings up his lack of guilt, which transforms into an admission, followed by tears and blubbering. Soon enough, the whole story becomes apparent. This guy did some messed up stuff. Or did he? Was it just the painting, using its anomalous qualities to make him believe that he was responsible for a heinous crime he didn't commit? It's not a complicated short film by any account, only a couple actors and some voiceover in one room, but the performances really sell it. Just make sure you make it to the canteen on time for a scoop of corn pudding or you might end up catatonic. Although, I'm not sure that's the only lesson here. 
Coming in at number three, we've got SCP-825, Lost Files, Fear the Foundation. The first couple SCP movies we talked about mostly showcase the terrifying potential of the anomalies themselves while letting the Foundation personnel basically run the experiments. But in this short, we get to see a little bit more of the sinister behavior the Foundation is capable of. You don't get to be a Foundation doctor by being soft, now do ya? We're introduced to a cast of fresh test subjects, none of whom are happy to be here. They're fodder for the anomaly being experimented on, SCP-825. This ancient helmet causes anyone who dons it to see what scares them most. Snakes, torture, or exposure to other, more terrifying SCP anomalies. The D-Class subjects act hardened at first, but it doesn't last long. Lack of control and exposure to their worst nightmares break them down pretty quick. However, this isn't just terrifying for the test subjects. Without spoiling too much, I'll just say that there's a fair deal more to be scared of than the people running the Foundation. This short isn't as polished as some of the others on the list, but what it lacks in effects it makes up for with this interesting concept. And of course, the plot twist at the end. You can really tell the filmmakers had plenty of passion for their source material. Coming in at number two, we've got SCP Dollhouse. Here's where the scares really get cranked up to 10. If you're familiar with Evan Royalty, you'll know that he and his filmmaking friends put together some incredible cinematic stuff with very little in terms of budget. A lot of the stuff on his YouTube channel is video game cinematics, but for this SCP tale, he went full live action. It's a quick, punchy short about a mobile task force that enters a house seemingly haunted by a digital entity. As the militaristic operatives discover more, they realize the danger that they're in. The ghost, if we can call it that, in the house is actually mostly computerized, and it can adversely affect visitors in ways you couldn't imagine. I'm actually not entirely sure if this is based on a specific SCP entry or if it's an original tale meant to exist within the SCP universe, but either way, it's a thrilling watch. I'd say if these folks behind the scenes had carte blanche, they would be the ones to really try for an SCPCU, you know, SCP Cinematic Universe. I'm not the most creative term coiner, okay? But seriously, the production quality provided by this short is next level. The folks behind it are experienced, talented, and inspired filmmakers. There's a behind the scenes piece that shows you what went into the making of this, and let me tell you, this is no goofy little fan project. They brought on a military tactics advisor to make sure they got it right. Dollhouse is a genuinely spooky and sometimes white knuckle scary SCP movie that I would recommend to any fan of the Foundation. Hell, even if you're not a Foundation fan, it's probably worth a watch. It just works. And finally at number one, 096. Ah, Mr. Clay, you've done it. You've cracked the code. This might as well be the first episode of an SCP anthology series. 23 minutes long with credits and absolutely jam-packed with SCP excellence. And it's super polished too. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this on Netflix with that big red N in the top corner of the thumbnail. 096 really feels like the start of something big. We focus largely on two high-ranking officials meeting in an ominously empty war room of sorts. A doctor has been brought in for a meeting concerning the titular anomaly SCP-096, the shy guy. He's upset because no one's allowed him to go forward with his plan of terminating this dangerous entity. Too little, too late. 096 has broken containment and is making its way across the country. The Foundation's doing their best to contain it, using expensive and destructive military tactics, but to no avail. The shy guy has been seen by many, and it's going to kill them all. The terror of the anomaly is only part of the intrigue here too. Plenty of Black Ops Foundation activity as well. I wasn't kidding before when I said I could really see it being developed into a whole universe complete with overlapping storylines and recurring characters. Kind of like a modern day X-Files, but with internet monsters instead. It's what the people want, right? Plus, this is a next level proof of concept. If you're gonna watch any SCP movies, start here. And while you're at it, give the rest of Mr. Clay's stuff a look. Right on. Hopefully nobody's too disappointed that I didn't have any feature-length Hollywood productions to recommend. And if you want movies that could be SCPs, there are other videos for that. So what'd you think of the list? Did I cover a wide enough range of SCP movies for you to feast your eyes and ears upon? Have you seen any of these already? What's your favorite SCP flick? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more juicy ones in the top five scary upcoming monster horror movies. Poker Face says Morbius is a melodramatic edgelord who takes himself too seriously, so it's the perfect role for Jared Leto. Oh, snap. You think Mr. Leto might have actually felt that one, you know, like physically. It's almost the perfect role because you see, Jared Leto actually lacks a compelling tragic backstory. C.L. Lyman says in Dark Harvest, what happens after the years he's treated like a king? Well, he turns back into a pumpkin. Cinderella rules. Sarah Zillwood says, hey Keegan, Ted Nugent called. He wants his shirt back. Well, tell him he can have it for 50 bucks. Man's gotta eat, you know? 
Albert M says, here in Texas, we actually have a lot of drive through movies around and open for business. It's perfect for horror movies. Absolutely. There are actually a few within a stone's throw of Toronto that have opened back up too, but it's a shame all these horror movies got pushed back. Zackzilla says, I wonder if they're planning a crossover with the Morbius and the new Blade. Well, knowing modern Hollywood, they absolutely are. They just won't tell you about it until the press release is clear and the licenses are renewed. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I transform into a werewolf and eat a big bowl of grapes, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more elaborate escapism. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Adventures where at came to little where at came to little. four, and that was while showcasing some high level. It's not a complicated short film on any account by... Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see something on this, like... Hmm.